Hello gamers, Mage Hammer here for another edition of tonight on Mage Hammer's Game Table, where tonight I am going to be beginning a series of solo RPG one-shot dungeon delves. And I'm going to use a different system in each episode. So we're going to start out this series with a basic fantasy role-playing game. And I have created these characters using my house rules. Um, they are in my solo uh, episode zero solo session video. You can go check that out. I may even link it in the description below if I'm feeling extra <laughs> ambitious. Uh, but these characters, uh, so this series basically is going to be, I'm going to send uh, each group of adventurers into a three level dungeon on some kind of random quest. Uh, I'm going to use Axbane's deck of many dungeons, which has all kinds of ideas for quests and so forth built right into the cards. Um, I'm going to be using those for the, um, yeah, here's the random quest generator. They're on the cards too. So I'll, I'll, if I don't like what I see on the card, I'll roll something on here. Anyway, I'm going to randomly generate the quest. They're going to go down the, um, uh, the, what you call it? The <laughs> objective is going to be in the third level of the dungeon. So they have to get down to third levels and go. I'm also using a uh, GM Scotty's luck dice. Uh, and I'm doing six dice per player character, uh, except for halflings get an additional die in my in my games because halflings are lucky. And uh, I'm using uh, many of the same. I'm using all of the same house rules that I've used in my previous basic fantasy role playing game campaigns. And so you could check those out in the links below, or check out my playlist, basic fantasy RPG. And you can see exactly where these are coming from. I'm not going to go over them here. Instead, I'd rather go over the characters and get right into the quest. So our questers are, this is Condaldor Fumes. He is a human wizard. We have Korshar Shieldcraft, a dwarven fighter. He is wielding a warhammer, by the way. That's a, I know it looks like a mace, but it, just pretend it's a warhammer. Okay. And this is Quinus Lightstaff. She is an elven cleric. And we have Remus Flufffoot, and he is a classic halfling thief. So those are your adventures. These are the dice that are going to be representing them when we roll initiative and uh, combat. So you can see those going forward. And I'm going to be using the random dungeon tables that are at the back of the basic fantasy role-playing game 4th edition rulebook. So I'm not using anything else besides that to determine what monsters are going to be encountered. And I'm going to be using miniatures, as I did in my past basic fantasy games. I'm going to be using miniatures for all the game systems I'm going to be featuring in this series. So with that, and without any further ado, we're going to get right into it. So let's see what the quest is. D12. One. Capture an evil NPC. Okay, so they have to go into the dungeon and they have to capture uh, an evil NPC who has escaped justice. They have a full description of this character and they know exactly who it is. And they are going to go find that person and bring them to justice. Uh, I will randomly determine who that person will be. Uh, guess I could do that right now. Um, see if I think there is a... There's a random generator for that. Uh, let's say of the four classes, we'll see if it's a class. Well, sure, it's... And it is the fourth, so it is a thief. So that makes sense. So a thief who stole a item. And uh, very important item. Here they are, NPCs and quest items. See, uh, x did a dungeon, NPCs and quest items. So there's the names, the job. Yeah, we're going to say thief for now. And we're going to roll a d6 to see what it is. He stole an orb, a golden orb crafted by demigods. And so the orb itself, uh, according to this, is worth 780 gold pieces, but their reward is 1,000 gold pieces if they can bring back the evil NPC along with the orb. Um, they want him alive so he can face justice, so the characters have to keep him alive. So we're going to begin using Axbane's Deck of Many Dungeons. This is our entrance. They enter in, they go down the stairs, and they come to a T-junction. Okay. Uh, so we're going to see what they see. They're going to look both ways. 
And down this hall is another hall. And I'm going to say this is a dead end. So the passageway turns to the north there. And then down this hall, they see a curved, rubble-filled hallway. So, hmm, where should we go? Gundledor Fume says. And uh, Remus says, let me, uh, let me uh, sneak down and take a look. So he's going to go down here, and he's going to look down this hall and see if he can see something down there. And he sees a hallway that leads to three doors. That ends in three doors. And then, oh, there's sounds. Ooh, let me hear sounds. Four. Dripping water. Perfect. Uh, as they enter the dungeon, they hear dripping water. And so he goes... He says, uh, there's three doors that way, a dead end that way. Let me go down there, check that out. He goes and he looks around the corner. And it looks like it ends. Now, in uh, X-Bane's Deck of Many Dungeons, when you get to a place where there is no way to go, you put down one of the kings, which is a final room. It turns and there's a door. Okay. So he comes back and reports that to his companions. And so they, they make a decision... Well, um, let's go to the right. So they're going to go to the right, or we could randomly determine they flip a coin. So left is odd, even is right. And they're going right, just like I had chosen anyway. Beautiful. So they head down the hall, and they turn down there, and they run into some smells, and the smells are sulfur. Oh, that's never a good sign, is it? So they come to these doors, and uh, Rima says, let me listen. So he's going to use his thief abilities to listen. And he gets a 21. And he hears nothing in the left door. Hears nothing in the right door. And listens to the beginning of the front door. Nothing there. Hmm. So he goes to open a door. Doesn't appear to be locked. He opens it while the rest of the party is in the hallway. And they see a room that has stairs that lead up. And up, being this being the first level of the dungeon, they assume would lead them upwards. So... Remus is like, I'm going to go investigate that. So he goes up the stairs, and it, just as he thought, it leads to the outside. Well, he could have come into this. He could have come into this delve and continued on out. Well, if we don't find him, then we know where to look for him. Yes, yes, good dwarf. Okay. Well, down the other way then. So they go down that hallway, and sure enough, there's another side entrance that leads to the outside. Well, this is getting complicated. Yes, if he escaped. We shall find him. If not, let's see what else we can find in this dove. So they go to this door here. He listens. Remus listens. Remus hears nothing. So they open the door, and they see a room filled with night statues, stairways, and a area down below. I'm going to roll. There's no monster indicated on the card, but I'm going to roll to see if there is a guardian monster here. Something that if um, the thief made his way down here, that uh, he was able to avoid. And there is none. It was going to be a one or a two. There was going to be a creature. So there's nothing here. So they head down these stairs where that question mark is, which leads them to the second level. So I'm actually going to clear this level of the dungeon for space reasons, uh, especially because they know the two side entrances are there and they can head to those side entrances when they want. And so we begin with another stairway leading down from that level. So we are now on the second level of the delve. So there's two double doors to the left, or double doors to the left, double doors to the right, double doors ahead. So Remus goes and checks the one on the right. He listens, doesn't hear anything, and opens the door a crack to look down the hall. And it looks like it goes for a while and turns to the right. Then he goes to the one across the way, listens, and hears nothing, opens the door a bit, and it's a hallway. Now, uh, I'm going to roll to see if that last area down here is a dead end. Um, one, two, three, it's a dead end. Four, five, six, it's not. It is not a dead end. So let's see what he can see. And it goes to the right. Okay. And then he's going to go here, and it's locked. Ooh, I have to try to pick the lock. So he's going to try to pick the lock. He's going to listen first. He hears nothing, and now he's going to try to pick the lock. He has a 45% chance, 
and O1, he clicks it open, it opens up, and he sees revealed another hallway that ends in a T junction. Hmm. Well, what should we do? Plenty of options. Yes, yes, plenty of options indeed. Aquinas remains quiet. Hmm. Uh, she, or, um, uh, Kundledor has cast light on his staff. That's how they're seeing the halfling and the, uh, human. Because they do not have dark vision. Well, what do we think? Well, let's see. One, like, we have this many choices. One, two, three, four, five. Let us, let chance decide. And so three, one, two, three. So they're going to go up, check out this hallway here. They travel down that hallway and Remus looks down the hall and sees a, we'll say that connects, makes sense for that. He sees a double door. Well, let me go listen. He goes to listen. He hears nothing. He opens the door. And uh, he sees a room with two pits, uh, a, a bridge, quote unquote, across the way from that, and a door to the right, and a person sitting in front of a campfire cooking some meat. And it is a half orc. Uh, Halfling closes the door quietly, comes back to the party, and says, Well, there's a half orc cooking some meat. I thought I smelled something. Yes. Anyway, what would we like to do? Well, I suppose we should go and introduce ourselves, see if he's seen the thief go by. Wait, what race was our thief? What heritage? Um, he was human. Oh, very good then. Not our thief. At least, as far as we can tell. So they walk in. Hello, sir. Um, Aquinas is like, let me handle this. Hello, good sir. Uh... I am Quinus Lightstaff of Palin, and you are? Oh, uh, I am Bronk. Bronk, the potion merchant. Are you in need of potions? Oh, we could always do with some potions. Would you like to eat? Oh, oh, no, thank you. Yeah, what's, uh, what's for dinner? I found a wonderful, wonderful centipede. Oh, oh, yes. Um, I'm, I'm very adventurous, but uh, no, thank you. Uh, you kind sir, uh, we, uh, I am uh, Condaldor Fumes, by the way. Uh, we are in search of a person who may have come this way, uh, human, we, and uh, dressed, you know, in cloak and so forth. Pretty average looking person, a uh, beard. Uh, have you seen anyone come this way besides us? Uh, no, I, I, I've been here for a little bit, um... I've been here for a day or two. Uh, came into one of the side entrances, came down here, found the centipede, and decided to camp for the night. And then I'm going to head back out uh, tomorrow, get back on the road. But I do have some healing potions if you're interested, or an invisibility potion, a potion that makes you invisible. Uh, are you interested? Well, sir, um, excuse us, good sir. We do not have the coinage. Um, I assume that your potions are quite expensive. Oh, no, 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 no. No, they're not expensive at all. A uh, 50 gold piece buys you uh, uh, cure light wounds. Uh, that's the going price in cities is 100. Oh, I think if we pulled our resources, we could buy one potion. Yeah. Yes, I think so. Yeah, about one potion. Yeah, I think we can cobble that together. Excellent. All right, let's do business. So they buy a healing potion off of him, if indeed that's what it is. And then they uh, say, well, we must really continue on. We must find we must find our, our quarry. Well, it was nice meeting you. Yes. Do you know what happens through the, lies through that door? Uh, I looked out, and there's a hallway, and then the hallway uh, curved to the, uh, or ended in a door. Oh, thank you so much for your help. Well, Bronk, uh, it was nice meeting you. Enjoy your dinner, and uh, we are out of here. Thank you. And so... They decide to go through this door here, head down here, and that door is locked. So um, Remus is like, hmm. He listens at the door, hears nothing, and he goes to try to pick the lock. And he does not. 50%. Not enough. So, uh, well, 
this lock is quite difficult. It's going to take me a while to figure it out. So um, I doubt that the thief was able to get in here. So I say we continue either to the right of that main entrance or we continue onwards to the left. Hmm. All right. Very well. Um, let's roll. So uh, he pulls out his magic cube, sends it in the air with a cantrip, and it rolls a three. So their options are one, two, oh, one, two, three. I guess it's one, two, three this way, four, five, six. Let's do that again. Uh, three, so three again. So they're going to go check that out. So they go down the hall, uh, go through the door, and they get to this. And they're, it, this door as well is locked. I don't hear anything. Let's see if I can pick this one. I can click. Uh, so the door opens, and there's a magic pool. And uh, Kundledore's like, oh, no, no, mm -mm, no. Pools are very dangerous. They can contain water weirds. They can make you die. They could be poison. They could be out. All right, calm down. I know. I'm well in, in traps. Usually if there's a thing of water laying there and it looks fairly clear, that's not a good sign either. I say we don't mess with it either. Very well. I shall rely on Palin's judgment. Yeah, let's go. So they make their way down this hall and look to the north. And it is a hallway. And they start down the hall and they start to, they hear something around the corner. So um, I'm going to roll on the encounter table to see what it is. And it is, hmm, okay. It's a moaning sound. They come around a corner and there are three orcs on the ground. Uh, two of them dead, one of them moaning, blood all over the floor. What? What happened here? He goes up to the orc. He says, what happened? Who attacked you? Um, the orc says, uh, a human ambushed us. Oh, oh that's unfortunate. Well, do you imagine that that was our quarry? Yes, so I guess that answers the question. Did he go out the side entrances on the first floor? No, he's heading down. I wonder what he's doing in this delve. What do we know about this delve? Well, uh, not much. Apparently, uh, it was a old uh, dwarven way station. Yes, I've noticed the dwarven construction. Yes, uh, something I, I, I don't know other than that. I mean, I don't know if it's a crypt, uh, a station. I'm just, I just don't know. Well, let us continue. So they head down the hall here, and the hallway curves and curves. They come around the corner, and there's uh, another monster indicated by the card, so we'll see what that is. Two. Um, it is goblins, and uh, they are dead as well, three of them. Uh, you shall know us by the trail of our dead. It's a poem I heard once. Oh, very poetic. And so they come to a door. This thief must be pretty powerful to be making his way through all these people. Or he had help. Eh, I suppose that's true. So uh, he listens at the door. Here's nothing. Opens the door and there's blood all over the floor. And a dead snake lies, a rather large snake lies dead on the ground. Uh, blood pouring out. The door on the far wall is ajar. We must be close. This blood is fresh. So they they make their way through the, the without stepping on any blood. They go through the door. <coughs> they come to this door. They look down this hall. And uh, there is another hallway. They He listens at that door. 64, doesn't hear anything, opens it, sees some supplies from ancient times and another door. He opens that door and looks inside, and it's an old bedroom and appears to be empty. I don't see anything. Let me see. So the dwarf goes in, looks around. Yes. He goes over to the um, armoire, opens it. Yes, nothing. A single gold coin on the floor. Picks it up. Well, I guess we continue. So they make their way down the hall. Long ago, bloodstain lies upon the floor. Let's see if our elf... Um, see if our elf recognizes the secret door. She does not, that they pass by. 
and there is a trap. So let's see what that trap is. D4 plus PC's level. Uh, the PCs are second level, except for the cleric and the half lane, or the thief are third level. I'm going to average that out to third level. So we're going to have a D4 plus three to see what kind of trap is here. And it is a four. That's a seven hidden pit trap. So they're going to walk. Um, the halfling has been leading, but he he is not heavy enough to to trigger it. So the dwarf is next. The dwarf triggered, the halfling gets across and the dwarf falls down into the pit. And uh, I will roll 1d3 to see how deep it is. And it's th 30 feet deep. He takes 3d6 damage. Oh my gosh, 11 damage to the fighter. So he oof Alrighty, so he is injured. They put down a rope. Um, he climbs back up. The pit is only about five feet across. The halfling's on the other side. So um, how do we get across safely? There's, there was no indicator. Oh, I remember. There were some long planks in the room back there. Go get them. So uh, the dwarf and the... Uh, the dwarf uses one of his healing stones to heal himself, by the way. Six. So it brings him to 19. He has two more charges on his healing stone. Two more charges. All right. And they bring a plank over. They put a couple planks down. They walk over the pit. No problem. Then they continue down the hallway. Let's see if the, the cleric does not detect it. Or does detect it. Oh, the secret door here. That explains it. So they got a plank over the pit now anyway. And... So they come to a very hard lock. He listens, doesn't hear anything, tries to open it, and oh, does not open it, zero, zero, hundred. I can't open it, but I doubt that the thief went that way unless he was able to pick the lock, but I'm telling you, that lock is very complicated. I wonder what's hidden in there. Time for another time. Let's continue. So they go around the corner, come to a hallway, and at the end of the hallway, they see... Uh... They don't see anything. Okay. All right. So they go down the hall and they come to a final room, which takes us to another room. Quest goal or stairs down another level. He listens at the door. Here's nothing. They open it. Pillared room. Chairs. Chests and stairs. So they're going to head down those stairs. So I'm going to collect this level. And I guess I'll keep this together in case we need it. I don't think we're going to need it. We'll see. And they take the stairs down, and they are greeted with three doors. Okay, so they head down. Check the door on the right. Here's nothing. Door straight ahead. Here's nothing. Door to the left. Here's nothing. They randomly determine one, two, three, four, five, six. They're going to the left. They open the door, and down the hall is blood spattered. And they go to the door and they listen. He hears nothing. He opens the door and he sees tiles or something. And then he goes to the next door, listens, hears nothing. And tries to unlock the very hard lock. So I'm going to give it a minus 15. So he's a 30% to unlock this. He does not succeed. Well, I doubt they came this way. All right, let's go this way. So one, two, three, four, five, six. They're going straight ahead. Listens at the door. Already listened. Doesn't hear anything for the second time. They open the door and they see a door. Well... Let's go down this hall first and see if there's anything down there before we go to that door. And it also is a door. Is All right, so since this is the third level, <clears throat> I'm going to say this monster or this monster is our bad guy. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Six. Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's this room, of course. Well, which way should we should go? One, two, three, we go that way. Four, five, six, we go that way. They're heading towards that door. 
They go. He listens. Oof, almost heard voices, but didn't. Pushes open the door and sees that. Now, we are going to set up this battlefield. Hey, thief. You fit our description. So, you must return the orb. Come any closer, I'll chuck the orb down into the bottom of these pits. And if you can see, they're very deep. Yes, well, that is unfortunate if you'd make that kind of choice. Either way, we're going to bring you to justice. I don't think so. And standing next to the um, thief is a band of bandits. There's four bandits plus the boss, the thief himself. So um, he must have picked up some help on the way. All right, so we have, all right, so we got the hallway there. Then we've got the bridge. And this is the door. They're coming through these, they're coming through this door here. And then this is the bridge. Let me back this up. Uh, so yeah, so the door is there. That's where the party is going to be entering in. It's going to be dwarf and thief, I suppose, in the front, cleric and wizard in the back. And um, so that's the bridge. So either side of that bridge is pit, and it leads over to the ledge there on. Yeah. I'm gonna make the ledge a little deeper, 15 feet or so. And there we are. Okay, so let's get us some bandits. Bandit minis. A little more organized than I was in my other videos. I think I have stuff a little closer to hand. I got started a little bit earlier setting things up. And so here we are. All right, so this is the... Th well, no, he looks too good. All right, so this will be our thief. All right, we're going to put our thief there. He's standing off to the side. Um, he's holding the orb because he's ready to chuck it over the edge. Uh, and he's got four bandit friends who are defending him. We'll just call these miniatures bandit friends. I'm not going to get too particular. Oh, we'll give one a bow. He's back there with a bow. And, uh, yeah, good. Pick the right box. Container. Another bandit there. And another bandit there. All right. Actually, he looks cooler. He's a cooler thief. We're going to make him our thief. I'm going to make him a bandit. Okay. So, uh, I'm going to add a couple more bandits because I forgot their second or third level. I was thinking maybe their first level. They're not. I upped them. Ooh, we'll give one a crossbow, too. Like crossbow. There we go. So, uh, they've opened the door. They see the thief over there. And so, um, the door's here. And there is that. So, this is the map we're playing off of. And there's, a, there's an altar right here as well. Bloody altar. Uh, we will use... This is the altar, and these dice will be the altar. All right. So, um, it says, All right, surrender it. Surrender us the orb, or you shall... Not... We want you alive, if possible. Oh, that's not going to happen. Death before I'm captured. No, oh, if that's the way you want it. Don't know why you cornered yourself. We're trying to hide. Oh, very well. You failed. All right, so here we go. Initiative. So the bad guys. Woo, bad guys rolled well. Plus is a thief. I'm going to say he has a plus two, so they're at eight. But our fighter is at uh, six. And our um, cleric. Our cleric is pretty good. She's at a seven. And so they're at eight, seven, six. And then our um, fluff foot, he has a plus three dex. He's at a seven, so he's tied with the bandits. No, he's tied with Quinus. All right. 
And then uh, next up is our wizard rolled very, very poorly, unfortunately. So he is at a one. So that is our initiative set up. And so here we go. So the bandits will attack first, crossbow and bow person. Crossbow is going to fire at the... Hmm going to fire at the dwarf since those two are in the, i'm going to say you can't see them it's going to fire at the dwarf while the bowman's going to fire uh he can see the cleric so he's going to fire at the cleric past the halfling's head so we'll roll for the so the blue one is the crossbow guy the red one is the the archer all right so they both roll an 11 they are first first they fight his first level so that's 12s um so 12 against remus is a miss he dodges easily and a 12 versus um, our dwarf, I'm sorry, Quinus. Quinus still has, she has a good armor class. She's wearing chainmail underneath that colorful robe. And um, the, uh, yeah, so both missed. So that's that. These two, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, are in light armor. They can move 40 feet in this game. So they attack, one on the dwarf. Uh, the one with the torch is blue. The one, the guy, the bald guy is red. Uh, so, they get plus one to this attack. Woo, 16. So, hits the halfling. So, Remus is hit for a d6 damage. He takes five. Ouch. Down to nine. Okay. So, that was them. The other ones move on to the bridge. These other two move into the bridge into a second rank, getting ready to step up and attack, keeping them that way. And the main thief comes down, and he has learned to use the orb, and he is going to send a golden beam at, let's see, at the cleric, at Aquinas. So um, I'm going to say Aquinas has to make a magic wand save, or else be hit by the beam. So, Quinus is going to roll. She needs a nine. And she gets it. She dodges the golden beam. Thank goodness, because it probably wasn't going to be good. Okay, so that was the bad guys. Now the good guys. So, uh, Remus... Uh, since he's small, he's going to fighting withdrawal back behind Quinus that he and and Quine, and they're going to like do a switch move. That is his action and move and she has a move and now she has an action. She's going to whap the guy with a quarter staff. Palin smite you and so she rolls um she gets plus 3 with this quarter staff and she gets a 13 which I believe is enough to hurt the bandit. Yeah, they're wearing leather armor. So hits the bandit and uh does a d6 damage. Four damage to the bandit. Since they're d8s, I'm giving them eight hit points each. So he is at half damage. Okay, so I was talking about being well organized, but apparently I forgot to get out my uh, tracking pad. So I'm just going to have to... All right, so one bandit. We'll put the bandits down the middle here. Uh, so that one is at four. And that one, these... Eight, all right, sorry, let's do it this way. Eight, four, eight. And then over here, we've got the crossbowman and the archer and our bad guy. So make him 18. All right, so here we go. All right, so next up is um, the fighter, the dwarf. He takes, he takes a swing at the bandit with his war hammer. And he hits armor class probably quite a bit. Uh, 15, so that's a hit. And he does D8, 5 damage to his. So he is now at 3. All right, so that was his action. And now finally our wizard. The wizard, uh, let's see. All right, he's going to try to sleep these two. So those, they have to make... Um, they have to make saving throws. Now the thief is third level and the bandit is first level. So the bandit will be, um, the bandit will be orange and the thief will be translucent. So 
the thief has to make a 14 roll and the bandit has to make a 17. So the bandit makes his roll, but the thief falls asleep. And there was one spell slot spent by Kundledor. So he remains awake. Excellent. All right. The orb drops and rolls. Let's see what direction it goes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five. So it rolls towards the archer. So the golden orb is rolling towards the archer as it falls out of the hand of the thief. All right. So that was everybody. We're going to roll initiative again. All right. So Remus goes on nine. And then um, next up, I believe, is he's got a five. Bad guys are tied with that. They go at five. Well, the thief is down. Yeah, I'm still giving him, I'll give him his plus two. Uh, Korshor is three, and Aquinas is six. So, uh, Remus uh, has taken out his light crossbow, and he's going to aim it at, he's going to try to shoot through and hit this guy. Now, if he rolls a one, he's going to hit Aquinas in the back. So let's hope he does not. All right, so he rolls a 10 plus uh, 17. So he's pretty good with that thing. So he hit his opponent for three damage. So this guy in the back here, um, yeah, is at five. Okay, so ching, 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 sound of arms. And next up is Quinas. She takes a swat with her uh, uh, quarter staff at the bandit in front of her. And it looks like she hits again, but she only does one point of damage. So that's not going to do it. So he's at three. And next up is uh, the wizard. He is going to try. He's going to try to put these two fellows asleep. He casts another sleep spell. And they have to make saves. One with the bag is the blue. They both fail, and they both fall asleep. So he is tearing them up with that almighty sleep spell. And then the bad guys. So these, this guy takes a swat at Aquinas. Uh, the blue die will take a swat at Aquinas, Aquinas and the red die at Korshor. Ooh, critted Aquinas. That could be bad. Korshor, he hit misses. Clang off your shield. Aquinas is critted. In this game, I'm using Castle Crusades crit rules which is maximum damage plus a d4 so uh this bandit is doing six plus so seven damage to aquinas uh aquinas is looking at okay so only at nine damage or nine hit points left not too bad solid hit though solid hit all right then uh over here the archer takes aim at aquinas blue and the cross uh, the crossbowman has to reload so uh Aquinas. Ooh, hit Aquinas again. Aquinas is taking it. Uh, so that's a D6 damage. Oh, six damage to Aquinas. Ooh, she's going to use a luck die to reduce that. All right, so three. So she's down to six hit points. And she spent a luck die. Okay. So, moving on. Uh, that was all all them. Um, okay. So... We move to the fighter, Korshok. He attacks with his mighty Warhammer and hits. Uh, he hits. Yeah, he hits. That's a plus five. 16. And he does four damage to his opponent and drops him. And then he's able to move. 5, 10, jumps over that guy. And we'll say that's rough terrain, so it brings him to about here. So he's heading towards that archer. All right, so that was that. Let's go to initiative. Okay, so uh, he's got a five, uh, Remus. Uh, also a five is uh, Kundledor, so they are tied. The bad guys are going on a six. And Quinas is on a five. So a lot of tie, a lot of simultaneous initiative. And Korshor, they all, the, part, the entire party goes simultaneously. That is hilarious. All right, so this uh, bandit fighting Quinas attacks with his short sword and misses. 
Um, the archer and the crossbowman both fire at the dwarf since he has advanced the farthest of the party and both miss. And then, um, so all at once, um, Remus is gonna make a run, Remus, Remus is gonna have to wait. All right, so Aquinas is gonna attack and, um, and Kundledore is going to fire off an arcane bolt. So the arcane bolt, he's got to roll a um, 13 to cast it properly. He does. So he does a d3, and Aquinas hits as well. So Aquinas is doing a d6, and the, the arcane bolt's doing a d3. So 5 and 3 is 8. That's enough to take that bandit out. So those two go, the dwarf, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, at, you know, as he's running amongst all of the uh, the arrows and the crossbow bolts flying at him, and he takes a shot at the archer and misses, because he just misses, because, oh, yeah, he's got a 10, so no, he missed. You know what? He might use a luck die to boost that. Let's do it. So that is 13, just enough to hit the archer, and he does uh, four damage to that archer. So that archer is now at four damage. Okay, and um, luck dice spent. And then Remus, uh, he was starting to move, and then he makes another move. He gets about up to here, heading for that orb. Okay, so that brings us to initiative. Uh, so Remus goes on five. Corshore goes on six. Uh, wait, did I roll a five? No, I, I don't remember. Uh, they go on seven, though. Uh-oh. Bad guy's on seven. Oof. And, oh, did I roll? And the wizard goes on a five. No, a four. She goes on a two. She's at the end. Okay, so the bandits. Uh, crossbowman reloads. Uh, Archer drops his archer and attacks with a sword and misses, kind of fumbling around. Uh, Aquinas, oh, I'm sorry. And then uh, these three are asleep. Okay, so that brings us to Korshor. He attacks the archer again and hits armor class 16, which is enough to hit. And he does six, seven, eight, takes that bandit down. All right, he's got the orb in front of him. He may pick that up next round. All right, and then that brings us to Remus. He runs over and grabs the orb, puts it in a pack. And then um, Kundledor moves up to the door, fires off an arcane bolt at the archer, and he misses the arcane. You know what? Screw it. He's going to use a, he's gonna use a th uh, luck die. And he gets that spell off and does a D3 damage. One. Okay. <laughs> Was that worth a luck die? I don't think so. So he's down to seven. This guy's gone. And there are... This guy's gone. And there are two sleeping. And the thief. Oh, no, he's not gone. Oh, yeah, right here. This guy. He's at seven. So the crossbowman's at seven. These guys are essentially out of the fight. And so that brings us to Aquinas. She, uh, yeah, she just makes her way up here to get a target. She moves to the thief. She's going to try to secure the thief. All right, so that brings us to initiative. The bandit goes first and he surrenders. Look, I'm hired help. I give up. I lay down my crossbow. I don't want to even fight with you. I, 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 I'm hired help. I'm just a mercenary. Mm. Very well. We're only interested in him anyway. <coughs> yes, that is so true. She ties him up. They disarm him and tie him up. You may even keep his possessions. Oh, thank you. And so they grab the orb. Except the orb, of course. And they leave. So they make their way back up through the dungeon. No need to kill off those bandits. They were just working, as far as she knows. Uh, there's no murder involved, so they don't have to bring in the justice. They, the rest, they, their orders were not to bring in or not to uh, 
people not to bring in bandits. They didn't even know about the bandits. So they ignore them and move on. And so that brings us to the end of this delve, the successful, successful outcome. So um, next episode, I'm going to be running a different system. And I'm not going to tell you what it is. You'll have to tune in to find out. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did. Thank you so much for your continued support of my channel. And until next time, keep on rolling dice and playing games. Mage Hammer out.